where they call Georgia And they say that it's deep and it's wide And they say that the king and the beggar On faithful will stand side by side And cross the angel over Georgia Why should I? He's changing songs, making fun of them. Tonight I'm going to jump off on that fast one for you. Some see he's bowing down here. Some look for pain. together in unity. Lord, we love you tonight. We're thankful for your peace and the joy that we have in thee. Bless us, we pray, in the churches everywhere where men are gathered together in your name. Lift us up above the shadow, O God. Open our hearts and minds to thy truth. Teach us thy ways, O God, and we'll thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, let's enter in, get our umbrellas down. Let's get our umbrellas down. And the black folks think it's home. It's raining on the inside. Come on in. So let it rain. Let it rain. Amen. <laughs>
wandering far from God. That's right. I was wandering far from Jesus in the paths of sin and shame.
your bed.
indicate him number and the people in the house before I come up here. Fortunately, numbers don't scare me. People do, but numbers don't. Uh, I, I guess I have my wife come up with with sing. And uh, that way, if, if we sing good and I preach bad, just remember the singing. Or if we sing bad and I preach good, just remember the preaching. And if I preach bad and we sing bad, just remember I don't do this very often. <laughs> Got all the bases covered. That's <laughs> your father. Yeah, I, I tell you, see, you know, God, God's good. And, you know, it wasn't easy for David. If, you're, if you know the story about David and Goliath, David was a little bitty kid, about like my grandchildren there. And Goliath was a big monster of a guy, uh -huh. and David had to go fight him. Uh -huh. It didn't make sense. Hey. All right. Well, I... Let me go make coffee. It's an A, not a T. She's going to have a keyboard, and I can push a magic button. Okay, cool. She can push a magic button. I can push a magic button. So Katrina, she said, if we sing tonight, thus sing something out of the songbook that everybody knows, and that we've actually done a few times or whatever, and that's safe, you know? It's very safe. And so instead... We're going to sing a song that we've never practiced, <laughs> and the band don't know, and me and Lisa sang it back in Simon the Wilderness, tried to about seven or eight years ago, and I couldn't sing it. So that's what we're going to do. Amen. But, but back then we tried to sing it in C, but tonight we're going to try to sing it in A. If it sounds better, Jennifer may remember, it may serve some memory, but if it sounds better, just know that sometimes in life, if one thing don't work, Try a little bit something different, you know? Because maybe that, hey, maybe that'll work. Actually, can I help us? I got it. This is an A, but it's on Right there. <laughs> in that bucket. 
<laughs> Only for Ronnie. <laughs> Only scary for Ronnie. <laughs> Only Ronnie will fit. Only Ronnie will fit this button for me. Right in front. Well, God's really good. Yes, He is. It's been an awesome week. Amen. And, uh, I had, after God started dealing with me on this message, I just need a little snippets of something to do. I had about six hours of uh, material <laughs> for the past couple of weeks that I've accumulated. And if you know me at all, you know that I've forgotten half of that, which brings me down to three hours. <laughs> you forgot half of that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Sister uh, Wendy and Brother Tony ministered kind of on it Friday night which brings me down to a couple hours. Sister Jennifer kind of got on it last night, which brings me down to about an hour. She talked to it this morning, which, that's it, I'm done. No. <laughs> no, but, you know, God showed me something in that. Number one, there is a mind of Christ. Yes, there is. You know, He has a mind. Every time we come together, He has a will, He has something that He wants us to learn. And tell me, does anybody know what goes worth right now? <clears throat> Not that I have any. I mean, I go paint. But it's worth about, it's worth over $1,200 an ounce. Wow. And what does God say about wisdom and understanding? Does anybody here know? More it's more precious. valuable than go. It's important to God that we get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Now, think about it. $1,200 an ounce. If you had a, a, a can of corn, that's like $18,000 if you had that in go. Two kinds, two kinds of vegetables we could pay off the mortgage to the church yesterday. Uh, yeah. But God said, yet as valuable as that is, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is more valuable, more important. And he's not talking about worldly wisdom. He's talking about spiritual wisdom. Yeah. And who in here ever cooks anything? Does anybody ever cook? Yeah. The, the people actually still cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, remember, Daisy, I know you know this, when they had recipes for everything, I mean, they didn't, boxes didn't have recipes. You had recipes, right? And what God showed me, and, and you know, I <clears throat> oftentimes talk to people about coming to church, and like they say there's no reason to, you know? But there is a reason to. Because this is where we get what, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that God wants us to have. Amen. And so when you hear this message tonight, imagine this, that if this was a recipe, well, I may be saying, put it in the oven for 350 degrees. But Wendy may have gave you the material to put in, such as eggs, butter, flour, sugar. Tony may have gave you, you know, the chocolate chips if you're making cookies, and the baking soda. And Sister Jennifer may have, have told you to stir it all up before you put it in the oven. And if you heard Tony and Wendy and heard me, then you're going to put something that's not even stirred up in the oven and tell me if you can get cookies out of it. Now this is what I'm saying. Every time we come together, if you're part of the body, it's imperative. You need to trust yourself to be here because you may, there, lots of times there's stuff going out here that I guarantee you, you need. Amen. So if this message don't make no sense to you tonight, maybe you should have been here Friday and Saturday. Amen. You know? So that may have brought, I'm serious now, that may have brought it all together. Has anybody in here ever read a book? and just torn some pages out of it, and then at the end said it didn't make sense. Well, that's what you're doing spiritually. You're tearing pages out of the book that God's trying to write, and then trying to make it understand it. Has anybody in here ever watched a movie at a theater, and then caught it on TV where they edited it? I mean, I've watched really good movies at a theater, watched it on TV, and they cut it all up, and it's not even the same movie. It don't even make sense anymore. Because it's been edited. We should not edit what God wants us to have. We should present ourselves. He says, even the more so. That doesn't mean slack off. That doesn't mean find excuses. That don't mean find a way out. It means press like you've never pressed before. And that has nothing to do with my ministry. <laughs> but it's the truth. It is. It's the truth. God died that we might receive His Word. It's imperative that we come and receive the Word. Okay. <clears throat> Okay. Now, Sister Wendy and Brother Tony on Friday preached on water. Living water, water coming from the mountain. It was really, it was really good. Sister Jennifer talked on water 
Saturday night, as you may have talked about it this morning. So Friday night we had water, Saturday night we had water, Sunday morning we had water, guess what I'm going to preach on? Water. water. No, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the people that come here all the time, you know better. Yeah, than right. That is, and, and, and the courtroom thing, that's called leading a witness. Uh, okay. Now I need to figure something out here real quick. Take a bath? Okay. I need to figure out where the splash is going to be. Oh no. Um, <laughs> the okay. Back here. Who's going to Who's going to get 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 <laughs> now see, I was going to scare Brother Ronnie, but, but he didn't sit down the front row. I took, hey, the merciful show, take mercy. Brother Ronnie, had mercy on you. Because I was really going to make you think that I was going to splash you with water, and I wouldn't do such a thing. And that's, you know, that's the problem, but I'm going to get all these other people wet, not think we're doing that. Okay, now the only reason I'm bringing these towels is in case I make a little bit of a mess. <laughs> I, my mom can tell you I try to be neat. <laughs> <laughs> now, <coughs> God gives every man a measure of faith. Yes. Can y'all see this? It's a measure. Okay. Thimble. He gives a measure of faith. This is a thimble. Thimble. <laughs> and I want to read. Matthew, 15th chapter, starting with the 29th verse. <coughs> now I'm going to tell you, Sister Jennifer, <coughs> excuse me, Sister Jennifer told us that she had a secret. And she talked to us about a secret that praising God will get you a long way. And I'm going to tell you two things tonight. I'm going to tell you, why is it the what is it that God expects of us? And why do we have to suffer? That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. 29th verse. And Jesus departed from thence, he came nigh into the Sea of Galilee, and went up into a mountain and sat down there. And great multitudes came unto him, having with them done those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. It's so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be a hoe, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples into him and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days, and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. And his disciples say unto him, when should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks, and brake them and gave to his disciples, and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meal that was left seven baskets food meat that was left, seven baskets full. And they that did eat were 4,000 men besides women and children. Now, a couple of things there. God, everyone in here, God knows your situation. God knows your needs. God knows exactly where you're at. Okay? The things aren't hidden. There's nothing hidden for God. No. And just as he did here, he will have compassion upon you. He was concerned about the people that had been there three days listening to him. He was concerned about them, and he went out of their way to provide their needs, okay? Now, think about it, 4,000 men, besides women and children, what is there are about like 15, 20 guys in here, and there's probably a woman and a half or two women. That's not very nice. <laughs> for every guy in there's probably a couple of women, no. Uh, but I mean, for every guy, you know, in, in life, there's always, eight or ten women and children. 
So he fed 15 or 20,000 people sure, yeah. with Absolutely. what? Um, seven a few little fishes and seven loaves. seven loaves of bread. So God's able to do anything. Above, abundantly above what we're able to imagine or ask, right? right. Amen. Now, in, in this we see a couple of things. Number one, God wants a personal relationship with each and every person in here. Because He would that none would perish. Okay? He don't want your relationship to be through me. No. Although there's a time for that. But He wants a relationship to be in you. The reason why he, he died and sent his spirit back was so that it wouldn't be a priest that told everybody what to do, but his spirit would be living inside us, talking with us, communicating with us, <laughs> living with us 24-7. You know? And, and the thing about God is, if you called on him at 3 o'clock in the morning, guess what? He'd be there. Amen. And you don't get a busy signal, and you don't get a bill through the mail later on. And you don't have to go through AT&T, which only works half the time. You know, you don't have to get on the internet where it's all busy. That's right. You can't get on there, and it takes you different places. My mom knows all about this. <laughs> no, if any time you need God, He's right there. Yeah. He's as close as you allow Him to be. Amen. Now, Sister Daisy preached this before, and we've all heard it. God's a gentleman. He will not force Himself upon you, but He's readily available if you would. Yeah. Now, God wants a personal relationship with you. Why? Because you love Because you love Has anybody ever thought about that? I mean, sometimes I wonder why my wife wants a relationship with me. Not alone God. What do I have to offer her? Not very much. What do I have to offer Him? Not very much. Only everything that I am. Right? But He wants us for a particular reason. He wants us to take what we have and give it to others. Now, I'm asking you a question. Is, now, see, I told you if this don't make sense, it's because you missed, don't blame me. Or you didn't get Friday and Saturday. <laughs> what does everybody use more than anything else, you think? Water. water. No. Get water off your mind. Air. Air. This is not about water. Air. It's because there's a big tub of it. That's not, you know, really, <laughs> see, you can get people's minds. Just confused, right? If you talk about water and you put water there, everybody's like, about water now? If we run to the bathroom in five minutes, there's water, water. Water, water everywhere, and I'll drop the drink. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good, Jangle. You keep on keeping on. Okay, now really, if you think about it, you'll never come up with the answer. But what do you use more often than anything else in life? Air. It's Air. Not water. Air. Air. Oxygen. Huh? Oxygen. Air. What? Oxygen. Air. Breathe air. 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 No. Air? Air. Yeah. Oh, oxygen. I get it. That's a big word. Oxygen. Three syllables. They're not for me to figure it out. So slow. But, you know, hey, one thing I told you, the only thing I'm really worried about tonight is the fact that you're right. It's been a, it's been a really good week, but it's been a really long week. We had a press, and I'm tired. And when I get tired, Katrina can tell you I get weird. You know, and you kind of lose some self I mean, that's the truth. So, <laughs> so I'm really worried about, you know, I'm a little concerned about that. So if I say anything, just know that some of it I'm just, some of it I am weird, but some of it I'm tired too. Now, um, let's see, how can I say this? Okay. When you want a meal, what do you use? Now, that's one hit. Don't say anything yet. There's more hits coming. When you wanted to get to church, what do you use? Gas. Your feet. Huh? Your feet. No, that's wrong. That's yes. right. Yeah. If, if you want to go to the moon, what do you use? Water. If you want to take a shower, what do you use? Water. Everybody's confused. Yeah. What did they come over from England on? Energy. Back in the days of the Chips. When they come from England. Back in the days of the pilgrims, what did they use? The pipes and everything else. They used ships, right? Yes. What's their name for ships? Vessel. Vessel. The thing we use more than anything else in life is vessel. Now think about it for a second. How do you get to church tonight? A car. Why is a car? It's a vessel. You're taking something and putting something in it. What's a house? A vessel. It's a vessel. Right? What's plates? 
They're vessels, cups, vessels. It's all vessels. So what are we? Vessels. Now seriously, we're vessels. To God, we're vessels. Now he wants a relationship with us because he loves us, but he also wants something out of that love and out of that partnership. He wants to use us for a vessel. Our bodies are vessels of God. This treasure, talking about the kingdom of God, is in a vessel. What's this? A vessel. A vessel. <laughs> now I'm going to use this. Now, no matter what your problem is, no matter how big it is to you, no matter how insurmountable it may be to the world, it's not nothing to God. Now, no matter what... Now, put, now this, this represents... This, they've been talking about living water, and we know that the, we're, the Word is the water, God is the water, it's living water, that's what this represents. Whatever you need us tonight, okay, this water that I got out of here can be the answer for you. Amen. Can be exactly what you need. I mean, if it's from God, if it's from Brother Jerry, I'm hit and miss. I mean, no matter how hard I try, I'm going to still mess up. But if it's from God, it will be absolutely what you need, absolutely when you need it. Amen. Okay? Now, I, I could have used a cup of water, couldn't I, for this? But I want you to understand something. That if I use a cup of water, God's ability, God's su supply to you, whatever you need, is unlimited. I didn't want to use a little dinky cup. I want you to understand that God has abundantly more. Amen. I can fill this thing up a thousand times out, out of this. And yet God would never run out. <coughs> if we filled it up a million times, God would not run out. But I want you to understand that our need to God it may seem like a big need to you, but to God, it's a drop in the bucket. Hello? Amen. No matter what, the, you depressed, drop in the bucket. You laid off without a job, without any financial means, drop in the bucket. You got physical ailments, drop in the bucket. No matter what economy, drop in the bucket. Right? It's nothing to God. That's easy. Now, We've heard like Brother Raymond talk about before he come to God how he had a hard heart. Right? I mean, I'm not saying any secret, right? And I had a hard heart. I think most people before, before they come to God, lots of people have a hard heart in one way or another. Now, God does not want a hard heart. Okay? So this, even though it's a vessel, is not a vessel God can use and as it changes. This has to change. But we're not going to use it. Now, <laughs> it's, it's hard to get old, although the alternative, you know, uh, how much say melted? Oh. This is bad. God wants to... You know, I think about, I bought this clay today. Do you know you can't hardly find clay nowhere? I thought they quit making it. You find clay nowhere everywhere. You can't find clay. There you go, I'll remind you. I think about my mom because when I was a kid, she may not remember this, but I used to sit for hours and hours to play with clay. Didn't I? Do you remember that? That's the most important thing you can remember from my childhood. That was my country. And I, I met this little guy, and I thought, you know, my mom, I probably did better when I was six years old than I did today. No, you didn't. <laughs> it looks the same, exactly the same. <laughs> okay. So God wants to take us when we give our life to Him. And, and see, but this isn't no good. Now, if, if people out here got a problem, you see, the disciples back then, they were the vessels. God broke the bread, God blessed the bread, then He gave it to the disciples. They were the carrying item. And he wanted them to carry it to the knee. Okay? Which is why God uses vessels. Uh -huh. God didn't individually walk out every single 15,000 people and hand it off to them. God handed it to somebody and said, here, give us the... Amen. Go out and start giving it around. Okay, so now this guy, now I say, Brother Bobby, has got a knee. And so I, I get what God has for me. Now, Brother Bobby, 
Come on, we'll actually get any to you. No, not. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Why? Because this isn't a vessel now. This is me. And as I become a vessel, a, not a vessel, bow, a vessel, I'm of no use. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to throw this guy away too. But I have to, I have to change. I have to change. Brother Jerry himself is not much good. But Brother Jerry the vessel, I can be, do a lot of good. Now, Brother Bobby, and I have tested this today. I test to make sure this is waterproof. That's probably why I need to clay and not play it, because I've got play on not waterproof. Yeah. Now, Brother Bobby. Now, I'll play my top with me. Brother Bobby, you be the expert here. Have I carried anything to you? Okay, now, some of what God gave me, I've carried it to him. Okay? Can you look? Okay, because I made it a vessel. Now, God wants us to have a relationship with him. God wants us to be a vessel for his use. And what does that have to do with why we suffer? Anybody want to guess? We can stretch us out, I guess. Okay, anybody in here ever suffered? No, oh, yeah. Let's just let's make it personal. Oh, yeah. there, nobody in here has suffered. Did you learn anything? We learn about the things we suffered, Jennifer. What have you learned? Say it loud. What? Being patient. Yeah, people have to write like me notes or something. Being patient and trusting in God. Patient and trusting. Faith. Faith. How does that help anybody else? Endurance. It helps you, which is the first thing you got to do, save yourself. Right? So your faith and patience and trust and all that stuff that goes along with that, that's good that you received that, but how does that help anybody else? Gives you a and after all, we're here to help other people, right? So how does what we suffer help anybody else? It makes them look better. Thank God he suffered more than I am. I thought I had a bad job. Wendy. Gives you testimony. Gives you testimony. Testimony. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but now think, think about it. That's true. But it's only true to a certain extent. Because your testimony has to be has to be more to it than that. Because otherwise people just say, oh, it's, a, it's a fairy tale, that's a fable, you know, he did it for you, but he don't love me. I mean there's a lot they can throw back at you. Has anybody here had children? I've done my time. You're <laughs> 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 when, when your child is small, remember the first day you sent him to school? And my mom can tell you about this too. But I don't remember this, but I know I did it. I cried all the time. <laughs> I, I go to school. I'm on my mommy. <laughs> right? Didn't I? Yeah, I I, yes, I, I really ate. I was oh, having good. <laughs> now, why was that? Because it scared me. Evidently. Right? It, it, the world was bigger than I was. I didn't like it. So I pulled back into my comfort zone. But now, even, okay, back then in school, I couldn't have stood before five people and talk. Could I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after enough years of, you know, <laughs> doesn't bother me no more. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is, the things that would scare a little child doesn't even, you know, I go to school now and sit in the first grade, probably get straight A's. <laughs> Not a big deal. Yeah, we can only go. Right? Yeah. You can't anything in the lines. I can do that. Oh, I don't know about that. I'm but to that child, it's a big problem. But to even an older child, to a fourth grader, they don't care. I mean, they can go sit in the first grade, they can probably make A's too. Probably easier than I could. <laughs> but to a little child, it's a big problem. To me, it's no problem at all. Um, 
Anybody go through the tornado? Yeah. We, we, I did. We did. I have a daughter at home, not this one, that's petrified of storm. She gets hysterical. I mean, if it comes on the TV, she's crying. And, and even if it's not even around, even if you go out in the sunny and it says a storm is somewhere in Indiana, Lafayette, she'll start crying. <laughs> but see, I've been through the tornado, I have no fear. I mean, they, they could be flashing messages, tornado, tornado, every siren in town going off and stuff, and I wouldn't be dreading to tell you, what would I do? I'd sit in my chair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if stuff starts actually going away in my yard, I might go down to the basement. But it's not going to, I'm not petrified by it. The flood, who went through the flood? Hello. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? That was a good time. <laughs> Now on TV, every time it rains somewhere in Indiana, there's flash flood warning, flash flood warning, flash flood warning. They're petrifying people. You know what? The flood was a mess. I didn't enjoy it, but it's not that big a deal. But you can live through it. Clean it up. I'm not worried about it. If it rains, I don't get scared. There's no fear in it for me anymore. Things in our life that we go through help us to be able to go through more. That's right. Perfect example. Sit down and eat an extra 10 bites of meal every day for the next two weeks, and at that time you'll find out that you have expanded. <laughs> Your waistline has magically expanded. <laughs> because you're bringing your making yourself where you can take more and more and more. Yep. Well, spiritually, it's the same way. The things we go through is for a reason. God has not forsaken us. God has not deserted us. The devil doesn't have power over us. No. There's a reason that we yeah. go through the things we go through. Right. Because, Brother Bobby, I gave you how much? About three drops to drink. I mean, I'm not asking you to drink it, because this is actually clay. But, you know what? He fed the multitude. Yeah. Children, there's a multitude out there in a lost and dying world. That's right. The needs have never been greater. Okay, the times have never been, that I can remember, worse. And, and you know, we've had some pretty weird times. But the, the reason why we go through things is because God is expanding us spiritually. God is taking our vessel that He can use, and He wants to take a little vessel, and He wants to make it into what? A bigger, a bigger vessel. A bigger vessel. Think about it. God wants to take a little vessel that I can do a little good with and make it into a bigger vessel that I can do a lot of good with. Yeah. The reason why we suffer, have you ever worked with, see, God's working with you. Do you understand that? You don't know why it's going on because God is working with you. That's right. He's taking you and saying, this is not good enough. You have to come up a little bit. We're going to have to smack you around a little bit. We're going to have to flatten you a little bit. We're going to have to need you a little bit. Why? Because I hate you. No, because I want to use you. Because you are valuable to me. And so if you allow him, you know, the Bible says don't get weary in well-doing. There's a reason for that. Because we do get weary in well-doing when we're tried. It's not funny. It's not fun. But the, the Bible doesn't say the rewards will be for the one that had fun. Brother Jerry has fun, but if all I had was fun, I wouldn't have no reward. That's, right. That's called the weekend. You know, have fun on the weekend. But for the week, you got to work. So God's taking that little vessel that he barely gave him a drop of water. And if I work with it enough, Brother Bobby, I can make this a bigger vessel that I can give you a bigger drop of water, okay? So you know what? You're dying. The world's dying for the presence of God. That's right. The world's dying for the move of God. And it's us that God's going to move through. Amen. So if we can be a bigger, better vessel, we ought to do it. So brother Bobby, here I got a bigger vessel. And if I'm careful, I can bring you a lot more water than I brought you before, okay? Or I can bring you and Sissy some water. Or you and Sissy and, you know, Sister June some water. Or I can give you enough water where you can take and put it in your vessel and give it to her. 
right? Yeah. I mean, there may be people that I don't touch, yeah. but you touch them. So if I give you the water and you got a vessel, then you can give them the water. Yeah. Now, almost done. I, I've used this, Brother Bobby. I made it as big as it can be. Am I done? No. no. Because you know what? If you get to the, the height that you get in one level, what does God do? Has anybody ever went through this? If you get to the highest you can go in one level, God will take you to a different level. And you know what? You start over all these. Hello. If I thought I went through this 10 years ago, I had this conquered. Guess what? God just took you to another level. Uh, I thought my finances was A-OK -okay 20 years ago. What am I doing? Broke now. God is taking me to a different level. You know, I, why don't... Now seriously, why do you think I sung up there tonight, that song? Not because I wanted to, because I felt in my spirit that God wanted me to. And you know what? It would have been a lot easier to go deeper, deeper, which is what we was going to sing. But I know in myself that that's a step back. Because I know that in my heart God wanted me to sing a song that I've never sang here before, never even practiced before. Right. So am I going to take a step back into my comfort zone? Or am I going to take a step forward into another level where, hello, I'm uncomfortable again? You know? And this week, a lot of God's children have stepped up into another level. Yes, they have. And we need to keep stepping up into another level because there's no height than God. If you can step up, you know, Peter's shadow overshadowed people and they were healed. Absolutely. Peter was not anybody special. Matter of fact, in the scriptures, he said, hey, I'm a guy just like you are. Tony, now think about it. Think about what the man said. Because they was like, oh, great mighty Peter. Oh, holy, holy Peter, Peter, holy. He said, no, 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 no. That's not right. I'm just a man like you are. I'm just a man just like Bobby, just like Tony, just like Jerry, just like any guy in here. Or woman, or child. There's no height. If it's in the Word of God, we can have it if we want it. Amen. God's blessings are without limit. Yes. Amen. God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is without limit. Yes, amen. God's desiring to move in a great and mighty way that like He's never desired to move before. And He's going to move through His people. Uh -huh. His, you are chosen vessel. Hallelujah. You are a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Okay? Those are idle words. If you will receive it, yes. if you will accept it, yes. right. if you will stand upon it, even when it doesn't look like it, it doesn't matter what it looks uh -huh. like. It doesn't matter what it seems like. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. He put the spirit in there for it. Stand upon it. Grab it. And then you got to be one to fight for it. Amen. I preached here one time about God giving us all little partial ground. And you got to fight for it. If somebody tries to steal your partial, fight for it. Because we're we're well able. If God be for us, you can be against us. Through Christ Jesus we can conquer all things. I'm done. Good work. <laughs>